What's up guys, Alec on Kiri here. And today we're gonna review a recent chin-up workout of mine. Well, recent should probably be air quoted here because I think it's from July, but whatever. I got a lot of training footage that I wanna vlog that I really wanna get through and showcase on my YouTube channel, but I've had a little bit of trouble keeping up with it. So, you know, I'm doing what I can. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get through these sessions in order as best as I can, except when I make short videos, when I make YouTube shorts now, that's usually just because I want to showcase a single lift or something like that. And so I'm kind of just publishing those as I do them. So if you see a short pop up, it probably means that I just did that lift in the last two or three days or something like that. So those, we'll say those aren't really canon, right? But the training vlogs are. They are all in chronological order. And so anyway, whatever, whatever. Anyway, guys, so this was actually the first time that I had ever done this particular chin-up variation, right? It's a close neutral grip chin-up using my Swiss bar. You can see I got this, so I had to figure out a way to be able to do neutral grip chin-ups. And so I threw the Swiss bar on top of my rack and then I strapped the thing down there with some really strong resistance bands and it's solid. It's working really well. I'm confident and I'm comfortable with that setup. And, and, and I really, really like this variation as well. And you'll see it kind of took me a few reps here during the ramp up portion to, to really get a feel for things. A couple of them were, were a little awkward at first. And some of the lighter weights, in my opinion, actually look a little bit harder than some of the heavier weights, or at least a little bit more rough around the edges. And, and in the end, though, I ended up working to a, up to a pretty solid single with 115 pounds. And for my first ever go at this exercise, I was pretty happy with that result. I, I had only done... 110, I think, at the time on the supinated chin-up, on the standard chin-up. So I actually beat that with this session here. And, and this is kind of like, they're not all-time PRs, they're comeback PRs, but I was happy with this. And, and up to this point now, I think I've done 130 on this variation, and I've done 135 on the standard supinated chin-up. So at, at this point, I've gotten 15 pounds more on this particular variation though. And what I'm doing right now is rotating through three different chin-up variations. So I've got this one here, the close neutral grip. Then I've got the standard supinated grip, which is a traditional chin-up. And those two exercises, like I said, are roughly the same strength. Supinated, I think is always gonna be, end up being a little bit stronger for me, but in the end, they're pretty close. And then recently, I introduced a third variation into the rotation, and that's the wide neutral grip. Chin up again, using the Swiss bar just like I am here, but taking the wide handles instead of the narrow handles. And, and that variation is actually weak as fucking hell, dude. It's so weak that it's pretty embarrassing. I have only done it one time so far, but I only was able to get up to 105 pounds. So it's substantially weaker than the other variation. And so I guess I'm kind of all in with the conjugate method right now, or at least something like it, at least on these weighted calisthenics exercises. I'm going to, I'm going to call it pseudo conjugate. <laughs> I, I'm rotating through variations, both on the weighted chin up and the weighted dip. But sometimes I'll do a single variation for two consecutive weeks or even three consecutive weeks. And then sometimes I'll just rotate through them week by week. It, it really just kind of depends on my mood, on what I want to achieve, on what I think I can achieve, on how my body is feeling and all that kind of shit, you know. But in terms of upper body work, those two exercises, the dip and the chin up, are definitely my primary focus at the moment. I'm trying really hard to improve them right now, probably harder than I ever have in the past. And I I would like to hit some lifetime PR. So I'm giving them more focus right now than I have in the past. And I'm trying out some new things and new methods as well. And so it really ends up being a combination of max effort work done in the conjugate style. So rotating through these variations and working up to at least something pretty heavy each training session, right? It can be a single, it can be a double, it can be a triple, but you got to work up to something heavy, something close to a max effort. So just the other day, I, I did a bottoms up dip with 160 pounds. I just made a short video showcasing that that particular lift, which is tough. But that was my second time ever performing that variation. Only the second time I've ever done that exercise. And then on my chin-ups, like I said, I've done 130 pounds so far with the close neutral grip. I've gotten back up to 135 pounds, which is three plates on the regular supinated grip chin-up. And then 
105 on the wide neutral grip. That, that's the embarrassing variation. That one is the weakest of the lot. And then if I get desperate in time and I think I need even more variety, then I'll try some pull-ups and I'll tinker with grip widths there and, and whatnot. So basically I've got plenty of options, right? And then I'm just going to keep pushing this format until I think it loses its value. And I don't think I've really come close to that point yet, but you never know. Sometimes it just kind of hits you. So we'll see. As far as this particular variation goes, though, the close neutral grip chin-up, I really, really like it. Like I said, it felt a little bit awkward here initially, but I've gotten a pretty good feel for it over these last few sessions. It's been a couple months now since I first started it, but I've only done it like three or four more times since this particular training session, since I'm rotating through variations, right? And, and even just those three or four sessions has made a really big difference in my comfort level level with the exercise. It's just, it's a great choice though, in my opinion. It feels really smooth to me. The biceps are in a good position to produce force and contribute to the movement, but the joints aren't stressed to nearly the same degree as with a full-on supinated grip. So the elbow issues are kept to a minimum, which is really nice. It, like I said, it feels smooth, it's easy on the body, and it feels strong. And so I've really been enjoying this variation. And then after the chin-up portion of the workout here, what I I kind of consider this portion, that first portion of the workout to be three distinct segments, right? So I have the, the ramp up to a heavy single or double or triple or whatever I feel like doing on the chin up. And that's segment one. Then I hit the pairing of the horizontal press with the back off work for the chin up. And so that's segments two and three right there. And then I move on to the final two segments of the workout, which are the pairing of the Swiss bar OHP with a rack chin up. And, and both of these exercises are just being done for volume. I think that the, the OHP movements are good for helping to build up the dip. And I told you that's my main pressing goal right now to hit some big weighted dips. So I'm using this here as an adjunct to that. And I've been varying that, that movement as well, right? I've got the Swiss bar OHP. I've got the trap bar OHP. I've started doing dead stop pin press overhead presses again, which is a movement that I really like. And I do that with the straight bar. And then all this overhead pressing also serves a secondary purpose of prepping me for overhead work because when I do decide that I'm done with the big weighted dips, then my next objective is going to be to hit a big push press again. And so I'll segue into that movement at that point. And then all this volume overhead work will have built me up a nice little base to stand on when I do that. And then finally, we've got the rack chin up, which is another great exercise. The legs are fixed here, so you can't kip or cheat at all. And then the way that the torso ends up situated lets you get a nice big stretch on the lats at the bottom of the movement in a way that you can't get with a standard chin up. So, so it ends up being a, it, it's, it's got its own benefits and it, it, ends up also being a really good tool for adding in some extra low cost volume for the lats. I've already got pretty big lats, right? But a little bit of extra hypertrophy never hurt anybody. And if I want my chin up numbers to keep on rising, well, I'm probably going to need to add a little bit more meat onto my lats in order to accomplish that goal. And so that's really the purpose here with this movement. That's really the goal with this movement. Anyway, it was good stuff here, guys. It was a really solid session. It was strong and clean work overall. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it gives you some ideas and some concepts to implement into your own training. Or I hope it just motivates you to push yourself a little bit harder and really give it your all so that you can achieve your training and physique goals. And that's all I got for today, guys. Please remember to smash the like button before you go. Leave me some love in the comments. Subscribe to my channel. All that shiz. And if you're interested in online coaching or training programs, then be sure to visit my website, www.oncareelitefitness.com for more details. Keep training hard, and I will catch you guys next time.